We, we are facing a different life than the Church of Israel did. It's the same thing. Don't do what they do. Do what I tell you to do. <laughs> it's the same thing. There's no difference. But the church has embraced so much of the world, it's now difficult, if I'm a stranger walking into a church, to say, well, what's different? Come on, sir. I see you guys singing together and all that, but okay, what's different? Because that guy I work with, and he and I hang out all the time. Just on Sundays, he comes to church. Other than that, our life is about the same. That's what most heathens are saying. Unbelievers are saying, there's really not much difference between us and Christians. They go to church on Sunday. Yeah. My gosh, that should not be what they say. They should be a defined difference. They should say, wow, you know what? In, in, there's no sickness in Christianity. That's what they should be saying. Because the power of God should be available to heal all. In Christianity, they should be saying, boy, you want integrity? Get you a Christian. Think about it. Every every employer should have Christians welcome. <laughs> because the, in, in the world we should be in, Christians have the most integrity. They work the hardest. They come to work on time or, or early. They leave last. That's what should be happening. But some employers stay away from Christians. Uh -huh. You're too confused. You're too confused. And they're right. They don't know what they're saying, but they're actually right. Because Christianity is no longer pure. It's no longer people following Christ, disciples. It's people following man, but calling it Christ. And that's what we're dealing with. That's what we're dealing with. Go to um, 1 Corinthians 6, just to drill home this whole, who are you merged with, who are you with? And how important it is and how God um, doesn't take that light, lightly. Look at verse um, 15 of 1 Corinthians 6 onward. And this kind of repeats what we just read in Malachi 2. Know you not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know you not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body, but two saith he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Flee fornication. And let me just define fornication so we're all on, on one page. Fornication is sex outside of a marriage covenant. Fornication is sex outside of a marriage covenant. So while sex creates a marriage, there's no covenant. It's still considered a marriage, and you could make it real by creating a covenant. Okay? But sex consummates, it's like the handshake. Here's a covenant, I'm going to do this, I'm going to be your husband, you can be my wife, and we have a covenant which means until death, and then we consummate, we shake hands on it by uh, sexual intercourse. Okay? Amen. So when I leave the covenant part out, but go shake hands, casual sex, I'm getting married, but without the covenant. Amen. And God detests that. It's an abomination. The rest of verse 18, Every sin that man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And flip over to, to chapter 3. Look at verse 17. Well, 16 and 17, I, I repeat. Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. There are many sins 
Not all sins are defiled. Fornication defiles. And God says he's going to destroy the person that destroys the temple of God. But we know with God, he allows a space says in Revelation 3, he gave her space that she may repent. 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 Yes. People foolishly, because the punishment doesn't appear to come, think it's okay. Galatians 6 says the best, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever you sow, that you shall you reap. And that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Still in the same vein, go to Romans 13. Just a scripture that hit me, and, 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 and I think most of us read over it, but there's one word that's kind of important. Look at verse 13 of chapter 13 of Romans. It says, Let us walk honestly, as in, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering. We don't use chambering anymore. That's a good old English word. We call it living together. The scripture says don't do it. <laughs> and ch notice, chambering and wantonness are combined. Okay? Not in strife and envy. As 